Joey Bosa is healthy, and the Chargers finish off-season training in maximum positivity mode. The Dodgers are bursting at the seams with incoming players, which could lead to some tough decisions. And Cooper Cup says he's healthy, and this time, he really, really means it. Good morning. I'm James. This is your Daily Dose of Sports and Snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report, and it is super early on June 13th, 2024. I still believe that this area is going to be a construction zone, so I got up in the middle of the night to do this clip. So be it. It's worth it. It's LA Sports. And if you like being in the know about LA, click clack the like button. Click clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that and let you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Now, before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. Texas 3, Dodgers 2. Shohei Otani homers. Walker Bueller wasn't bad. He allowed two runs in five innings, but he still took the loss. Dodgers lead the division by six and a half. Meanwhile, today, Texas is at the Dodgers again at seven. We believe the starter for the Dodgers is Ryan Yarbrough, three and one with a 3.12 ERA. Yoshinobu Yamamoto's turn was supposed to be today, but it's been delayed to Saturday. The Rangers can counter with Michael Lorenzen, who is three and three with a 3.05 ERA. But what do you say we get to the news? Because we got lots to discuss. Yesterday, we wrapped up the Rams offseason training and determined that they have some issues to resolve. Nothing catastrophic, but no, not exactly smooth as glass. The Chargers, on the other hand, are more happy, happy, joy, joy than a Ren and Stimpy marathon. Uh, for example, ESPN asked Joey Bosa what it would be like to play alongside his brother who, you know, is up in San Francisco, Nick Bosa. You might have heard of him, been to a couple of Super Bowls. Now, what the hell would you expect Joey Bosa to say? Man, reunited with my family. That would totally suck. Of course he wouldn't say it. That's like asking a rabbi, hey, wouldn't it be great if there were peace in the Middle East? I mean, what are we talking about here? I don't know why ESPN led with that story because there's no there's no sources suggesting that Nick Bosa wants to trade out of San Francisco, let alone to the Chargers. The important thing from the article on ESPN was buried towards the bottom that Joey Bosa says he's completely healthy. This is from a guy who's only played 14 games in the last two years because he's had a variety of really bad injuries. Quote, my foot's feeling great, toe's good, the hamstring's good. I mean, there was a list of things last year. My hand. So all of those things are good. It's nice to be feeling better going into year nine than you have maybe since five, six years ago. I've said I've been feeling great the last couple of years. It's the real deal this time, unquote which is obviously great news if you're a Charger fan, other than some wild fanta fantasy about, oh, wouldn't it be great to have a family reunion? Meanwhile, elsewhere with the Chargers, if you really have to look for bad news, which means they're either really good at controlling the narrative or it really is good times. The only thing that I can think of that's remotely controversial isn't. Wide receiver Lad McConkey is the lone unsigned draft pick for the Chargers. Having said that, he's still practicing, and he's developing chemistry with Justin Herbert. McConkey, by the way, in case you're wondering strategically what's going on, he's lining up mostly in the slot. The Chargers coaches love his route running. We're starting to also learn about what the Chargers might look like during the regular season, judging from what the Chargers threw out there in a practice uh, held at Camp Pendleton in North San Diego County. And by the way, as a side note, nice of the Bolts to throw their old home a bone like that. But one thing we learned is what the starting defensive backfield might look like. The two corners appear to be Asante Samuel, uh, Samuel and Christian Fulton as the corners, Derwin James and Alohi Gilman at safety, and a nickelback in Jasir Taylor. Now, having said that, 
the Chargers defense, uh, defensive coaching staff, they want to move James around, which means he could wind up lining up at nickelback as well. And it sounds a lot like what happened under Brandon Staley. We'll have to see how it translates this time because defensive coordinator Jesse Minters does recognize that it didn't work gangbusters with Staley. Quote, you've got to be careful of not overloading him, unquote, meaning Derwin James. Khalil Mack and Bosa have obviously been around the block a few times, and that matters because if there's one thing, and I know I'm speaking to a lot of dudes out there, one thing that every grown ass man can appreciate, it's straight talk. You don't have to beat around the bush, just tell us what the news is and we'll deal with it. Mack said coach Jim Harbaugh, quote, kept it straight, unquote, with him. And because of that, Mack bought in and resigned with the Chargers at a pay cut. Quote, he's a simple dude. He's not gonna tell you what you want to hear. He told me, well, if we've got this many guys on each side, we can win, unquote. Bosa told The Athletic something very similar, but even more basic. Quote, I want to win. Winning football games is more important to me right now than making some extra money, unquote. So again, you really have to look for bad news with what's going on with the Chargers right now. Meanwhile, over with the Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw will pitch a simulated game at Dodger Stadium today. The Dodgers could theoretically send Kershaw out on rehab, but at least for this phase of his recovery, they wanted to keep as close an eye on him as possible instead of sending him on a plane for Arizona and watching it on video. And there's a reason that they want to keep close tabs on Kershaw, aside from the fact that it's Clayton Kershaw. Every player that the Dodgers add now, and remember, there's a lot of injured pitchers, there's some spinning wheels in the bullpen, there's some spinning wheels in terms of the outfield and the lower half of the lineup. Every player the Dodgers add leads to a choice that's going to be difficult. For example, the Dodgers sent Miguel Vargas back to the minor leagues in response to their trade for Kavan Biggio for, with Toronto yesterday. I should say Wednesday. Vargas didn't suck, and he still got sent down. Miguel Vargas' average is higher than Biggio's. Biggio stays in the bigs, Vargas gets sent down. Now the question is, where does Biggio play? because it could be anywhere. The primary reason that the Dodgers were so hot and bothered to land the guy is because he could play at middle infield. He could play third. Hell, they'll put anybody in the outfield for kicks. We've been talking about how the Dodgers are probably looking at minimal upgrades instead of landing one big star in the trade market. In other words, all the things that you read on those Dodger blogs, put them to the side. It's probably crap. Remember, we did, we, when I'm at home, we have that big whiteboard with all the names of Dodger rumors, and the vast majority of them do not come true. So let me drop this idea on you. Could Kavan Biggio be the next Chris Taylor? Taylor has been extremely useful in Dodger blue for years, but the dude is only hitting 100 right now. He's literally going to have to hit like Pete Rose for the rest of the year just to lift that number to mediocrity. The upshot for him, in my opinion, Chris Taylor has until Max Muncy gets his health back before the Dodgers have to make an uncomfortable decision. And by the way, another reason that Biggio did stay with the big leagues, he hits left-handed. They want balance in their lineup like that. By the way, the Dodgers sent Toronto a pitcher I've never heard of for Biggio, a minor league pitcher. So I'm guessing overall the deal is decent for LA. This matters because even though the Dodgers do not have a ton of major league ready prospects, they still have some highly regarded ones.
These are the names that you're going to wind up hearing being bandied about as the trade deadline approaches. It's less than 50 days away. You're looking more at single A prospects who could get, get, get who could get dealt instead of triple A guys. So the names you'll hear of, probably Josue De Paula, power hitter in single A, pitcher River Ryan, catcher Dalton Rushing. There are other pitchers that you'll probably hear in these rumors. Kyle Hurt. Ronan Kopp, Jackson Ferris, and Peyton Martin. Don't be surprised if Miguel Vargas is also considered a trade chip. Dave Roberts believes Vargas is a major league player, but the Dodgers roster as it's currently constructed simply don't have enough at bats for him, which is why he's back in Oklahoma City. Again, he didn't suck. The last time Cooper Cup was healthy for an entire season was 2021, and damn, that dude built one of the most historic years in league history. Cup led the league in catches with 145, receiving yards 1,947, receiving touchdowns 16. He won the NFL Offensive Player of the Year award. He was the MVP of the Super Bowl by catching the game-winning TD in the final minute. And then everything just fell apart. An ankle sprain ruined his 2022. Hamstring issues cramped his comeback in 2023. Now, Cup suggested to Fox Sports that he's okay now. Quote, getting healthy during the offseason was a big deal being able to do all the things I want to do. Last season was rehab for all of it until training camp. And so I've been able to go back and train with the same people I trained with for the last four years when I was actually dialed in and have the same consistency that I've been able to do every day." Unquote. Obviously, Cup on one side, Nakua on the other, the Rams would be extremely dangerous on offense. Now, you might find this hard to believe on the other side of the ball for the Rams, but CBSSports.com actually thinks Byron Young is under the radar. What? <laughs> you really have to force yourself to believe that. Their argument is that the Rams brought Byron Young is under the radar because the Rams finally had a first round pick. And not only that, they spent their first round and their second round pick to rebuild the defensive front. And because of that, because those guys are going to be, have so much shine on them, you're going to forget about Byron Young. Really? To which I reply, Byron Young had eight sacks. Shut the hell up. Eight sacks. Like that's nothing. <laughs> Byron Young is not an afterthought, guys. You would have to admit a lot of things have gone horribly wrong for the Kings this year. Literally, since the ball dropped in New York, everything just fell to pieces for the Kings. Like, I don't know, like a sandcastle getting hit by a wave or something like that. And to be honest, much of what I'm about to tell you, you can print it out, provided you still have a printer, and take what I'm about to say on that sheet of paper and put it at the bottom of a urinal, all right? But The Athletic threw out 10 names of potential goalies that the Kings could acquire because they need an upgrade. Yes, they re-signed Dave Riddich, but the dude's been a career backup. Who are we kidding? Cam Talbot is a free agent. He was up and down during the season. And prospect Eric Portillo has yet to start an NHL game. Now, most of these 10 names that The Athletic listed will not make you happy. Most of them won't. So I'm not going to go over them all. And some of them, I don't even think the Kings are even remotely interested in. But the most obvious possibility would be Boston's Linus Olmark, the 2023 Vesna Trophy winner. Boston has a couple of goalies, younger goalies, that they like and that they want to give the job to. Now, a trade would be difficult. The Kings would obviously offer Pierre-Luc Dubois. But who the hell's to say the Bruins would want that guy? This is if you believe the Kings and Bruins actually did talk about trading for Olmark in the last year. 
There were stories that they did. We don't know that for sure. Nashville's Juicy Saros is another possibility, but fitting him under the cap means bidding adieu to defenseman Matt Roy or winger Victor Arvidsson. Ilya Samsonov, kind of shaky, as is Philippe Gustafsson. I'm extremely skeptical that Anaheim would trade John Gibson to Los Angeles. Then there's Eunice Corposalo. The Kings already had that guy and they let him go. So why would you go out of your way to deal for him again? See, as, I'm starting, as you're starting to understand, most of these guys are not exactly finding the next Jonathan Quick. Maybe Olmark, maybe. And if Cal Talbot is too old, Darcy Kemper was on that list. Darcy Kemper, <laughs> if Cam Talbot is this old, Darcy Kemper being this old is not a solution, okay? Darcy Kemper is right behind him filling out his AARP application. Cam Talbot and Darcy Kemper could literally sit right next to each other at the Cracker Barrel asking for the senior discount. That's how old those guys are. So no, they're not answers either. But you let me know what you think of the comments thread. I've heard of Chargering. If you're a Chargers fan, do you feel confident that this might be the year that Chargering ends? What tough decisions do you think the Dodgers are going to have the most difficulty making? And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We talk LA sports here every single day. Thanks for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Unless, of course, the Lakers hire a coach. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Cortel Queso production. Take care.